Good evening, fellow Africans and friends of Africans in Hong Kong and abroad. I bring you greetings, Pan-African greetings, and I want to say Ed Mubarak to all of our Muslim brothers and sisters and fellow Africans. I greet you across the, the continent. My name is Kapo Daniel. Once more, you are welcome to this platform. This is a Pan-African platform where we talk about Pan-Africanism and we introduce African Africa to Africans. And uh, I speak Pidgin English, Pidgin Standard English. So if you are watching me with your Oxford Dictionary or with your Cambridge Dictionary, you are going to be very disappointed. We are very proud of who we are as African and we, we decide to speak uh, languages that have evolved around our areas where we grew and uh, that is just what I do. So you're all welcome. We are going to have uh, a couple of uh, uh, issue addressed on this episode. Today we are going to talk about this, the fight that has happened in the, in the red light district of Hong Kong in Wan Chai where, we, where some of our African ladies were involved in the comfort business they got involved into a fight and i'm going to give you a little bit brief update of the african community in hong kong as well as take you back to our motherland africa to talk about the various things that are going on from the drought in madagascar the the problems in the congo in the central african republic and with good news that is coming from southern sudan i'm going to give you that and much more like we always do on this show just in case you're watching us for the first time I want to apologize for having been out for so long. This is due to my other obligations, and I hope we'll find more time to bring up issues in this uh, platform and address them. I greet you all in Hong Kong, and I greet you all across the globe, and uh, all friends of Africa, because we, are, we don't just have Africans here, we have friends of Africans. And, uh, and if you are an Africa, an African, a black person that, it in, that is interested in Pan-Africanism, please contact me. This is my WhatsApp number and I'm going to add you in our WhatsApp uh, platform called Africa Hong. In this uh, platform, we organize African events with African Caribbean theme to introduce our culture to foreigners and other Africans in Hong Kong. So you're all welcome. We will start with a song and after that song, I'm going to go right straight into my presentation of this night. So you are all welcome and I'm going to be looking at the, the, the the comment section to greet those who are watching me right here in Hong Kong. So today I'm going to start with this music. It's a very good uh, traditional music from the British Southern Cameroon territory. Hope you're gonna pure African talent. Greet you all. I take this moment to greet everybody. I can see my sister Domiona Dum is online. I greet you, my dear sister from Madagascar. Today we are also going to talk a little bit about Madagascar, what is happening in Madagascar. So welcome, my sister, and all those who are going to be joining us tonight and those who are going to watch us later on. You are all welcome. I can also see that Natukonda Arina is also online. I greet you all. And uh, all those who are in K11, those who are in Team Tatsui, and those who have visited Hong Kong, this is our great city, uh, or in mainland China, I greet you all. And uh, welcome to the show. All welcome. We'll just try to introduce our culture you know this is a program where we introduce africa to other people and uh, this music is from my tribe and uh, this type of music is a communication when they dance is a juju dance you know when they dance they play the rhythm is actually communicating a message to the audience so i think that is it for that music we will just go straight into our presentation of tonight once more ladies and gentlemen I welcome you to this platform. It is a pan-African platform where we talk about pan-Africanism. We introduce Africa with African voice. Like our forefather, 
the one of the forefathers of the United States of Africa, Je Gavier, Marcos had said, you cannot depend on other race to free you. So we as Africans, we cannot depend on other race to free us from colonialism, new colonialism, or to help us to navigate our way from em through emancipation. So that is what we are trying to do here, at least, or at least leave our footprint and set an example and inspire others to do more, much more better. So ladies and gentlemen, we will start today in Hong Kong. You know very well in Hong Kong there have been some issues with fighting amongst our sisters here in Hong Kong. That is very, very sad. First, I want to talk about the, the death of our uh, one of our African sisters who, who jumped out of the building, who, is, who purportedly jumped out of a building. I personally do not believe that that lady committed suicide because we have met that lady a couple of times. For those who visit Tim Tattoo area, I've met that lady. She was constructing her house and investing heavily in Kenya. We don't believe that that lady would just commit suicide like that. And we don't expect or rely totally on Hong Kong police force to investigate. But this platform take that challenge to always go out there and make sure things are investigated. If that lady was a white lady or an American, we are sure the, the case would be on the media. The police will be investigating what really happened. I met one of our sister from South Africa, uh, Londi, and uh, she's, very, she's a musician, very kind lady. And she, she even uh, offered for, to accompany me to go and do some basic uh, citizen in, uh, investigation about what happened so that we can present it to our people who have concern about our African community here to know exactly what led to the demise of that lady. I apologize that unfortunately I could not do that because I did not have enough support from the friends and people would know that lady more intimately. And we will keep on trying to, to see if we can give more information about that particular case. But today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you to Wan Chai. For those who do not know Wan Chai, Wan Chai is like the red light district of Hong Kong. It's only second to Lai Kwai Fong. We had an incident of a video that is going viral of some of our sisters who were fighting there. I'm going to play that video and I'm going to give you my comment regarding that particular video. I know some people do not like to be on, on TV because this program is going to be shown on ACN internationally across the continent. It's going to be rebroadcast on that uh, TV channel. So when you don't want to be on media, please do good things and do things that are not going to put you on, on the public uh, public front because whatever you do as an African in Hong Kong, you represent all of us. The things that you do out there affects the image of all Africans. We cannot just complain that people treat us in a certain way that we don't like and we do not address the issues that we have in the public as well. So we are going to address this issue and I'm going to play that video so that you watch with me what happened. It's a very, very, very sad video, very, very sad incident in uh, Wan Chai. This is the video in question of the fight. Very, very, very sad. Very, very sad. It's very, very sad to see two African ladies, beautiful ladies like this, going at each other with a weapon. The other one used a, a bottle to, to strike the friend. When I watched the video the first time, my heart just sank within me. I felt so sad and so bad that in the middle of Hong Kong, African ladies who have traveled all the way to come here and make money and help their families back home. I know most of these, these uh, comfort ladies are people we all know. We meet them when we go out to drink. They are our friends. And we know their story. Some of them, they are here because they are single parents who cannot make it and meet in Africa. They have taken upon themselves that journey to come abroad to make money, not to fight against each other. Not to fight against each other. This is so, so sad. But for the sake of uh, our reporting, I will try to slow down the video 
so that you guys can actually see what really happened. And I'm going to advise based on the, the evidence that we can observe on this, uh, on this video. So this is the second video that I've slowed down. Let me play it so that you can see exactly what is happening according to the, the observation from this video because you don't know what really happened. You don't really know what happened. But from this video, you can tell that these two ladies were in some type of an altercation. They were arguing or something. And the, the, the taller one who is more bigger seems to be exerting some physical cover on the younger one and trying to let me just play it you see I've slowly down you can take a look you can see that she's trying to seize the bottle from that lady's hand I think she hits her on the head you can take a look look at her hand she's holding her hand and she hit her boom on the head so from the look of things the, f the bigger lady, from my observation, is exerting pressure and looks like she was grabbing the, the smaller lady on the neck or something like that, from my observation, or trying to stop her from reiterating to hit her back with the bottle. And she, do she does just that. Look at it. She's trying to hold the bottle. You can clearly see why grabbing her on the neck. That was after she already hit her. Let me put it from the beginning. See? With the bottle on the hand. She hit her on the head. Boom. Then she tries to grab the bottle. Holding her on the neck. She passed the bottle in the other hand. Where she could not. To protect the bottle. When she have a little bit space. Hit the bottle on the wall like a weapon, change your hand and stab the other lady on the neck. Oh my goodness! And again on the stomach. This is so terrible. Do not fight. You these ladies have to sit down amongst themselves and have a conversation. How we interact with each other, especially in abroad. You don't fight. Physical violence do not solve any problem. It can lead to death. It can lead to imprisonment of both girls. The worst of all is using a bottle, using a weapon. No matter what differences you have, resolve it at home. If you must shout at each other, make sure you don't use physical force. What will happen if the Hong Kong police come there? They will just grab both of them. Because when it comes to cases of Africans, they don't really care. They'll put both of you, they'll take you both of you to the hospital, get the hospital record, put you in the prison and ask A to make complaint against B and ask B to make complaint against A. And they send both of you to the court so that the duty lawyers can make money out of you. And after they dump you in jail so that you can go in jail. Jail is a big industry in Hong Kong where you, you do cheap level producing masks and stuff like that. It's terrible. Let's watch the video, the entire video. The friends try to come there. When she discovered there is a bomb weapon, she ran away. Other friends come around, they could not intervene because she had a weapon. They had come that bottle in the weapon. You can hear them speaking in Swahili. And you can look at blood. I have blood the video. It's so terrible. There was blood all over. So terrible. Two African sisters who are probably friends. Who knew each other's story comfort ladies using a weapon against each other that is so sad that is so sad this should not be happening within our african community and we hope those ladies are going to have a dialogue and educate each other about how the legal system in hong kong work 
Because when you do like that, you just end up, both of you end up in prison and nobody will win. It is so, so sad. We don't want to see that amongst us as Africans. We have suffered enough. We are coming from a continent where people expect a lot from us who are in the diaspora. These are not the type of images we want to send back home, we want to present to the world. That is very sad and it's unfortunate. So that is it about what is happening in Hong Kong. We are going to still come back to the date of that, our friend. There are a lot of good things that are happening. There is, uh, there is a new law now in Hong Kong that is really anti, really, really aggressive towards asylum seekers. We are going to handle that subsequently. They have changed the law. They are demanding for immigration officers to have guns and stuff like that. Hong Kong should be taking its square from our mainland China, where they are very, very hospitable. The Chinese government is host to thousands and thousands of refugees and asylum seekers, and they don't complain about it. Yes, we know our city, Hong Kong, is small and it's congested. But we have to show hospitality. Hong Kong is benefiting enormously from the global market and from, ter and from tourism across the globe. The price, the small price we are called upon to pay as a city to host asylum seekers, refugees who are running away from problems in their home country, it's not a big thing for us to, to be that harsh. It's so cruel. Anyway, I had called on my friend of um, the, the guy, Innocent of African Center, that we can work something out. It did not turn out the way I, I, I wanted. But it is what it is. That is something we could beat. But we have to we have to collaborate better in Africa in, within our communities to handle things like this when they come up. Remember that Hong Kong is a democratic country. It's a democratic uh, special administrative region. We do have democracy here. When I just came to Hong Kong 2003, there was a lot of racism. We worked with with the with, with a lot of uh, legislative member that is our legislative members of our mini constitution here the basic law we work with them they, they receive us in the parliament this the the legislative they, they interviewed us about the racism we we campaign we work with soko and other organization and we we, we spoke they have we they, they had they gave us audience and eventually a law against racism was passed in the hong kong legislature which is recognized by the chinese constitution so we could beat this thing, but there was no coordination amongst us who are community leaders and uh, who are championing the cause of Africans here. And it, it just slides by like that. It's not good for Africans at all. I know that the Hong Kong immigration will say that 90% of asylum cases are rejected here. We believe the process is really not fair. And uh, even Einstein would have his case for asylum rejected here in Hong Kong. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue. We, I'll take you now to, to Madagascar. We are hearing that there is a, this is the second year we are hearing of this, uh, this drought that is taking place in, in, in Madagascar. And thousands of people are migrating, mi migrating north, running away from hunger and from drought. You know, Madagascar is an island. It's an island in Africa, in the southern part of the African continent. And uh, this is the second time we did not expect to be talking about hunger in Africa in this 21st century. But it is happening in Madagascar because of global warming. Drought have hit this area. They don't have water. The conditions are really, really bad. I've watched some of the videos on the Internet and from some of our Madagascan friends who have sent them to us. We pray for the people of Madagascar that they would overcome this hurdle and they are going to come out strong. And I hope it's not going to, they are not going to resort to borrow money and begging from the international community because we believe Madagascar have produced enough engineers. They are hardworking people and they are going to, to rebuild and fight this deforestation, which we believe it is the main cause of drought in Africa. So in, in that, that's, a, that's a, the sad news coming from Madagascar. We have two other videos from Congo and from Central African Republic that I want us to take a look. But first, I want to just bring this good news that we are hearing from uh, South Sudan. 
after their war, you know, a lot of people have been, been considering South Sudan as a failed state. But we are so happy that the president of South Sudan, uh, Salva Kia, have dissolved the parliament. That follows the, the negotiation between both factions. And this dissolving of the parliament is a very, very good move. We hope it is going to give a chance for the opposition and the other rebels that have become the opposition to also file in their candidates so that the, the, the legislature of South Sudan is going to reflect all the constituency of that country and they are going to have democracy. The problem we have in Africa is that when we have patriots who pick up guns and go to the bush to fight for freedom, when they take over the country, like the case of Uganda, they feel like like uh, you have the dinosaur in Uganda there, uh, Museveni. They think that they own Uganda and the people of Uganda cannot do anything because they brought freedom. So now they themselves have become a problem. Museveni have become a tyrant because he took power by force. We don't expect the same thing to happen in Sudan. So we are very happy that uh, Salva, Salva Kiir is now building strong institutions. We hope one day he will leave power. He should not just think because you fight the war and you won the war, you brought freedom and independence to southern Sudan so you can rule forever and create your own dynasty. We do not want political dynasty in Africa. We hope and we wish that with this deal of a new election that will be coming up in southern Sudan, this country is going to be built not on personalities or strong men, we want stronger institutions, the respect of the rule of law. And in Chad, we have seen how Emmanuel Macron have gone there, talking of the devil himself, and he's supporting the coup d'etat, uh, creating a dynasty from the, the son of uh, Mr. Idris, the former president of, uh, of Chad. And uh, that situation is dire. And the, the, the manipulation of the French government across our African continent is still very real. So I'm going to play a video that is coming up from Central African Republic. I share it with you what is going on in Central African Republic. As most of you have been following, Central African Republic used to be a, a colony of France where they have maintained as they have on all their former colonies in Africa, tyrants that do not leave power. The president of, uh, of, of Central African Republic, Bouzizi, was taken out by by rebels the president was the president Francois Bozizi was removed from power by rebels he was a, a puppet for, for France the people fought very hard I think they call that rebel group is a Selica Selica coalition they fought very hard they won they, they, they removed him from power he was a, a puppet for France but the French government have worked so hard and they, they have kicked them out. You now have ex Selika rebels. They are fighting in the bush. They have welcomed the Russians, who have been a very stabilizing force in Central Africa. And they are now, the French government, now, after they had that peace deal in 2019, to make sure that the country will transition into democracy. Uh, they, they have had an election and things are moving on well. But the French are still working hard to make sure that they destroy Central Africa. There have been images of French mercenaries, secret service caught with weapons, who are, are coming to destabilize this country. And the French army, who are working side by side to destabilize this country, they are rallying people to come out and try to get the Russians out of Central Africa. Listen to this lady. <laughs> J'ai rencontré le MINUSCA avec les Français. Ils m'ont appelé. Je suis venu. Ils ont arrêté leur voiture, la voiture de MINUSCA. Ils m'ont demandé. Je leur ai répondu que je partais au champ. Ils ont sorti un papier et me fait lire ce papier. J'ai lu. Ils m'ont proposé de 500 euros. J'ai refusé. Moi, je leur ai dit que les Russes sont venus nous libérer. On a beaucoup souffert. Regardez, j'ai une cicatrice de Seleka. Les Seleka m'ont tapé et j'ai fui. Ils m'ont regardé longtemps. Ils m'ont dit, non, on va te mettre une masque. J'ai refusé. Ils m'ont tendu les 500 euros. J'ai refusé. 
et je, je les ai laissés à côté de leur voiture et je suis parti au champ. Ils achètent des gens ici pour témoigner contre les Russes, mais nous, on ne veut pas. Ce sont les Russes qui sont venus nous libérer. On est en paix maintenant. On ne veut plus des Français et des ministres. On ne les aime pas. So, these are testimonies that are coming in out from Central Africa. Citizens talking about the French military going around bribing citizens to come out and make up stories against the Russians' presence there because they want to get them out so that they can continue to manipulate the people of Central Africa and have another puppet to rule that country. Remember that Francois Bozizé, who was a president and puppet of France, who had been ruling that country as a tyrant, after he was, was removed from power by the Celica coalition, he ran into Cameroon and he was interviewed and he said that the French people are running the country. He does not even know how much comes in and how much goes out. That is a testimony of a sitting president in the Central African Republic. We have heard the testimony of the president of Chad who was killed, talking about how the French government changed the constitution of Chad to allow and force him to run for election against his own will, even when he ob make an objection. So these are the things that are happening across our continent and we are seeing Africans being unable, despite their level of education, their human resources, to make any strife or develop politically. I'll take you to the Congos, which is even worse. This is worse. This is so sad that a continent so rich like Africa will have one of the most poorest people relying entirely on international donors become beggars. How did this happen? Let me take you to Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is the richest country on earth, naturally endowed, but yet its people are the poorest. Listen to one of the ministers of Congo who is going to explain to you exactly why the, the people of Congo are so poor and the mafia and manipulation of the international community, the multinationals who are basically implementing the undercover policies of the Europeans in Africa. Listen to him. Il y a autant de Congolais qui vivent avec moins d'un dollar par jour. Je pense que c'est la conséquence de mauvais choix ou d'orientations qui ont été dictées fin des années 90, début 2000. Quand à la... So this is Lumimbi, who is a former minister of the, the Democratic Republic of Congo, testifying to the world what is going on. All the mineral resources in Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, do no longer belong to the state or the people because of this mafia that has happened. Take a listen. Suite effectivement de l'environnement politico-social que vous connaissez, l'État congolais a été contraint sous le conseil de ses partenaires multilatéraux et même bilatéraux. De... So, for those who do not understand French, because most Africans do not, I myself, I don't even like this English I'm speaking, <laughs> but for the purpose of communication, we have to speak it. But remember, my English is not the European English, it is the Pigeon English. <laughs> 100% Ambazonia pitch English. So, he is saying to those who cannot hear French that the state of Congo was forced. Let me replay it so that I think. de l'environnement politico-social que vous connaissez, l'État congolais a été contraint sous le conseil de ses partenaires multilatéraux et même bilatéraux de céder la majorité des actifs miniers à des partenaires étrangers. So what he is saying, that on the advice, because of the war and all the hardship of the Congo, on the advice of the partners, the multinational and bilateral partners of the Democratic Republic of Congo's government, the, the government was advised, this is advice, you understand how they come and they advise you with a gun on your head, advice to see it, to give away the control of all its active mines to foreign company. Let's continue. Listen. Tout l'espoir que ça générerait des revenus, 
comme je dis souvent, du lait et du miel pour le peuple congolais, ce n'est jamais arrivé. On a envie de comprendre. Quand vous dites les partenaires multilatéraux et bilatéraux, c'est eux qui décident que le Congo doit céder ses richesses à d'autres. Qui sont ces partenaires multilatéraux Fin des années 90, vous connaissiez la situation politique et sécuritaire du pays. L'État était financièrement exsangue. Alors, qui alors, sont ces partenaires multilatéraux Alors, c'est le FMI. So, even the journalists is asking. So, you are really saying that the international community will ask you, will advise you to give away your natural resources. Remember, cop copper, gold, diamonds, name it. They are all in Congo. The main ingredients of making mobile phones, that is like the, the, the raw cash. They are all in Congo. And they have ceded it to multi multinational companies. Listen. Politique et sécuritaire du pays, l'État était financièrement exsangue. Alors, qui sont ces partenaires multilatéraux Alors, c'est le FMI, c'est la Banque mondiale. Qui décide qui, céder vos richesses à, qui, à, à qui, des entreprises Qui conseille, qui vous dise vous, État congolais, vous n'avez plus les moyens financiers de maintenir et de développer vos actifs miniers. Nous vous conseillons gentiment. Oui, de, bon, on sait comment on conseille. Voilà, euh, de céder ça à des partenaires techniques et financiers internationaux qui sont spécialistes. So, the World Bank, these multinationals and all these bilateral companies are all partnering with the World Bank, asking a country to give because they say you don't have money to mine. Have you watched those people doing the mine? They are basically working with bare hands. What type of investment do you need to dig mine in your own country? This is so stupid. But we know the mafia that they have had over these people. They use them to fight war. They help Kabila to become the president. So they come with this deal and they have to accept it. Selling away all the resources of your country. Listen. Et qui ont les moyens, ils vont développer ça à votre place. C'est l'erreur fatale qu'on a faite qu'on ne devrait jamais faire dans nos pays africains. Donc aujourd'hui, à qui appartiennent ces mines-là Quelles sont ces entreprises qui détiennent finalement la plus importante richesse de ce pays Quand on dit que la RDC a exporté plus de 1 million de tonnes de cuivre et près de 100 000 tonnes de cobalt, c'est 5 ou 6 entreprises étrangères dans lesquelles, malheureusement, l'entreprise de l'État Gécamine n'est qu'un actionnaire minoritaire qui n'a quasiment rien à dire. Ah bon et donc, aujourd'hui, qu'est-ce qui se passe C'est This is so, so terrible The people of Congo, come and listen to your country. Africans, come and listen to what is happening and think about how can people respect us if these type of things are allowed to happen and take place in Africa. The richest country, everybody have a mobile phone. Probably most of those parts are coming from the Congo. So, four to five country companies globally owns all the resources of Congos now, of, of the Congos now. Because the World Bank tell them to give their natural resources, their, their gold and mine, to these foreign companies that are going to finance and help them to, to extract those mineral resources. And in return, are go they, are going to suck. they are going to enjoy uh, a profit of the taxation and like shareholders, gain some share. So listen to the, the worst part of this story. You would think that this will mean that they are going to seed it. They are going to receive some huge sum of money from this company. Or at least the companies are going to come with huge sum of investment. No. These companies did not have a dime. Or they didn't bring a dime to the table. Listen. When the government was alone with its enterprise, Jekamine, alone in the sector of the mining, it près de 500 000 tonnes per year. Et la Gécamine se venait à près de 70% à tous les besoins budgétaires de l'État. Mais aujourd'hui, avec plus d'un million de tonnes exportées, ces entreprises ne contribuent même pas à 17% au revenu de l'État. Pendant que... So, hold on, before we get to that part. What he's saying is that, previously, these mines were paying up to 60% of the country's budget. Right now, it is paying... They are exporting far much more than they were exporting before. But these same mines are now contributing less than 17%. The 
that a deal which was supposed to ben benefit them, supposedly to benefit that country, have cut their GDP. A source of 60% of their GDP have been reduced to less than 17%. Listen. 20 ans, alors que nous avions promis des dividendes pour la GECAMINE, des impôts pour l'État pour nous reconstruire, rien n'est venu. Vous savez pourquoi Parce que ces entreprises, elles ont pris nos gisements, elles sont allées les donner en garantie à des banques étrangères et elles ont emprunté, au lieu d'amener des capitaux qu'on nous avait promis, c'est des prêts qu'on nous a amenés à des taux qui dépassaient 10% alors que nous savons qu'ils les avaient à 2 ou 3%. Donc, on... Jesus. Jesus. The thing is, what shall we do? What shall the people of Congo do about this? Listen very well for those who did not understand French. They met these foreign companies who were supposed to, they were supposed to sit, give this, this mining, all these mines, all these natural resources to this company who were supposed to come and help them to develop this company because their country was broke. Their country got into contracts with these companies. Then these companies did not bring any dime. These companies then take those contracts, those mine, to banks and borrow and use that mines like guarantee to borrow money huge 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 sum of money to come and invest in that mine loans that were supposed to be gotten for two percent were now borrowed for over ten percent at the expense now of the congo mining industry so this company is already they have a financial company that is going to be benefiting ten percent of all resources all minerals that have been extracted from Congo. Then the Congo state is now a minority shareholder of its own resources. It has lost even voice. That means the, go the government of Congo do not even have a say. Jesus. The resources of a country is the natural endowment, is the empowerment, that God has given to the people of Congo to develop their own land, to empower them when they have ability for their businesses to be able to loan money from their own banks, from their government to be able to provide public services, tar road, light, electricity, to make investment, building hospitals, building schools. No doubt the children of Congo are all refugees walking around carrying shit in white man country, begging other countries like refugees and they are being disregarded. They are being insulted everywhere because their country have been mortgaged. Their government have gotten into contracts. Those contracts have been sold to bankers. Debts that may never ever be repaid fully. They will be paying those debts for years and years and years and years and years. What the people of Congo they need to do is they need to tear all those contracts in pieces. They need to destroy all those contracts in pieces. Because when a government do not serve the interests of the people, when the government have become a, a source of, of stupidity to mortgage the future of the entire people of Congo of Africa, the people have to revolt. The people have to rise up and revolt and tear all those nonsense that they call contracts. Of course, the international communities, the bankers, all these mercenaries are all involved. They are going to make sure that Congo will remain poor for the next hundred years. But the people of Congo, they need to rise up and revolt and make sure they take back control of this country. They are just going to go into that elections. They have made elections and make sure that the elections, the, the, new, the new regime there is as powerless as possible so that they should be bound to those same contracts this is going on across the entire continent of africa and you expect people to respect us as black people you say black life matters what matters people in congo are dying from hunger they cannot even take care of themselves all the monies have been spent in the white man land bill gate you find all these big banks 
they get that money, borrow it again, and then they come and lend money to other Africans. They steal from the Congos, borrow money to Ghana. It's all crazy going on there in Africa. It's all crazy. It's all bad. It's all wrong. No other race can allow this thing to happen to its own people. No other race can allow this to happen to its own people. The Congolese people, so naturally blessed, yet so poor. Those money will be spent by billionaires. You see them traveling around planes and Congolese will be watching them like, man, this is not happening. And it's happening all across Africa. It's happening all across Africa. We have to make sure that governments will be by concern. Leaders will be people that are going to fight for their freedom. Do not depend. Like Javes had said, remember, do not depend on other race to free you. We as Africans, we the never again generations, we have to open our eyes and understand the international community, how things work. We need to rally ourselves we need to campaign, raise awareness for our people to understand how they are being taken advantage of. The puppet government, most of them, they look for the most stupid people. Some of them carry this BB call, these titles called PhD, but they don't have anything in their brain. They are not patriots. They are not nationalists. They are not there working for the people. You need to look for people who love the grassroots, who come from the grassroots, who have patriotic spirit, who love the Congo people, who are there to sacrifice for the Congo people. Those are the people you have to look for. Where are the Patrice Lumumba? They have killed them all. A new generation must rise in Africa, in the Congo, that can take back control of the resources and make sure that, that those resources will be there for the people to enrich them because do, that is theirs and the congolese people will be going around praying up and down jumping fasting fasting rubbing cream why they are being robbed in broad daylight this is robbery this is armed robbery this is armed robbery and it needs to stop it needs to stop you have seen how the malians I salute the comrades of Mali who have risen up, taken control of their, of their government, of their resources. The French are crying. Mali has gone back to the people of Mali. They should stop all exploitation of the resources, the, 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 how they call this resource in, in Mali that produces nuclear weapons and nuclear energy. They have to stop everything and make sure that they can extract it by themselves and sell it in a fair price so that us Africans, we can participate in the global economy positively in ways that can benefit our own people that is what have to happen and africans have to spend time to think about what they really want to look for leaders who have a vision who have a vision not those people who come with big sounding english big, big sounding grammar big, big certificates to come and exploit you and you are there Saluting, yes sir, yes sir. Our, com our, our culture is being destroyed by assimilation. We self-assimilate. I've never seen a culture like this, a people like us. We self-assimilate, adopting white man language just the way they are. If Rwanda can abandon French, can abandon French for English, why can't they abandon French for Swahili? It means that we can do the same. We can do the same. But this is not tolerable anymore. It's not tolerable. We have to seek for an Africa where government is by consent, where the constitution matters. Look at what they are doing in, 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 in Chad. The French government comes in Chad. When there is a coup d'etat, the president is dead. The constitution stipulates the next in power is supposed to be the parliament, the, the head of the parliament. The French government supports the son a military man to take over the country and all the whole African continent is quiet. When the Patriots in Mali took over power, the whole African Union was shouting, oh, coup d'etat, coup d'etat. We are going to sanction Mali. We are but now Emmanuel Macron have spoken and all the African leaders have run away and hiding their heads under the sun. Why are they not calling the coup d'etat in, in chat? 
Why were they calling it coup d'etat in Mali? Where is the legal president? Where are the principles? We must stand up for the sovereign states in Africa. The sovereignty of our people must be respected. We must make sure that any government is a legitimate government that represents their people and have ascended to power by concern. We must educate our people to see the reality of our continent. It is in the hands of multinationals who are making sure that the governments are failed governments with people who are stupid or who were brought to power by them so that they can make such ridiculous contracts. May God help us. But this is terrible. This is terrible. So we have come to the end of this show. If you are an African and uh, you you are anywhere in the world, you want to join this platform, you can contact me on WhatsApp. I will add you in our WhatsApp platform where you can engage in conversation about Pan-Africanism with other Africans all over the globe. Wish you well. We we'll continue to engage with our community here in Hong Kong and across the globe. Salute all of our Africans, Israeli, Tawabona, Bote, Marahul. Have a good night. God bless you. Keep the faith. Africa will unite one.